Mr. Majeski's Anatomy 32 class lecture, Chapter 3, Part 3, Connective Tissue. So we, we have now moved on to connective tissue, one of the most diverse categories for tissues. And connective tissue uh, is cells and the extracellular matrix that surrounds them. So in connective tissue, you often don't have the cells directly contacting each other, but instead are more indirectly connected through the surrounding extracellular matrix. Also, connective tissue tends to be highly vascular, so that it has blood vessels throughout it. And below you see an artistic rendition of um, many of the connective tissues all together in a mess. You would never see anything quite like this in a living or dead human body. So the extracellular matrix is composed of two categories of substances. The ground substance, which can vary from tissue to tissue, and fibers. One or more of three types of fibers to be more specific. So the ground substance is what's between the cells and the fibers. It can be a fluid, such as blood plasma. It can be semi-fluid, gelatinous, such as in cartilage or calcified, as we find in the bones. And its uh, roles can include supporting the cells, binding them together as a storage place for water, and or as a medium of exchange. The fibers, on the other hand, come in three types. These protein fibers include collagen, which is very strong and can resist pulling forces. But it's also flexible. And it is found in bone, in cartilage, in tendons, and in ligaments. And in this artistic picture, you see these bundles of collagen. They're sort of a bluish color in going in one straight path because they do not branch. Second, there's the elastic fibers. These also can add to strength and stability. However, these fibers tend to be branched. So here they, the artist is colored at yellow and you can see it branching out. It can stretch and return to its original shape, which is very useful in organs and structures that stretch a lot. It can be found in the skin, in blood vessel walls, and in lung tissue. And then finally, there's reticular tissue, which in this image is colored pink, and you can see that it also branches out quite a bit. Its roles include providing support and strength, and it is found to be plentiful in stroma, which is the supporting framework of many soft organs. And it is also found in basement membranes, which, as we already know, is epithelial tissue. So there are five big categories within the category of mature connective tissues. And A, uh, A is loose connective tissues, dense connective tissues, cartilage, bone tissue, and liquid connective tissues. We're going to start off with the loose connective tissues, which include areolar connective tissue, adipose tissue, and reticular connective tissue. So areolar connective tissue is consisting of all three fibers. You can sort of see in there uh, long fibers that are sort of grouped together. That would be the collagen fibers. And then you also can see thinner fibers that branch out. That would be the reticular fibers and the elastic fibers. All around the fibers is a semi-fluid ground substance where you find many kinds of cells, from immunological cells such as macrophages and mast cells to cells such as the fibroblasts that produce the fibers. Areolar connective tissue is often called the packing material of the body because it is found in and around nearly every structure. And it functions to provide strength, elasticity, and support. Adipose tissue on the other hand, is unique in that it looks sort of like you have big cells that are empty, but actually that white area inside the cells is where fat is stored. So adipose tissue is located in the subcutaneous layer deep to the skin. It is around the heart and kidneys to provide some cushion to them. It's what makes up the bulk of yellow bone marrow, and it's also found as padding around joints and behind the eyeballs. And its functions include reducing heat loss to the skin as an energy reserve and in support and protection of some organs. Then you have reticular connective tissue. 
in it, you can see these little fibers that are branching out. In this case, they're blue because that's the dye stain used. And there's also uh, empty spaces and then the nucleuses of the reticular cells, which in this case have been stained uh, red. And reticular connective tissue is often found in the supporting framework of the liver, spleen, and lymph nodes, as well as found in red bone marrow and around blood vessels and muscles. And its functions include binding together smooth muscle tissues. It also acts as filters that will filter out worn out blood cells in the spleen and also microbes that have invaded your body in places like the lymph nodes. So those spaces between it can be sort of the, the openings in a mesh that the lymph or the uh, blood will flow through. So loose connective tissue, you've got the reticular connective tissue that only has reticular fibers that are very clearly branching out inside this uh, tissue sample. You've got the adipose tissue, which basically can, it consists of big white blobs. And then the areolar, bleh, the areolar tissue that has all three kinds of fibers, a variety of cells uh, embedded in a semi-fluid matrix. Next is the dense connective tissue. You've got dense regular connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue, and elastic connective tissue. The dense regular connective tissue uh, has large bundles of collagen fibers that are arranged going in one direction. So as you can see, they look like big um, pink areas that are moving or in the same direction. Moving is not quite the right word, but going in the same direction. And in between that, you see these little white strips. And that is the um, fibroblasts themselves, with the little dark bits, the nucleus. Location of dense regular connective tissue includes tendons, most ligaments, and aponeuroses which are sheet-like tendons that attach muscle to muscle or muscle to bone. And their functions are to provide strong attachments between various structures. So they can really resist those forces when your skeletal muscles contract, allowing for the movement of the bones. Dense irregular connective tissue is similar in that you have these um, bundles of collagen fiber. However, in this case, these bundles can go in many directions. They can go lengthwise, uh, back and forth, diagonally, whatever is necessary. And the dense irregular connective tissue is often occurs in sheets beneath the skin and around muscles and organs. This is often referred to as fascia. It is found in the fibrous pericardium that surrounds the heart, in the periosteum of bone, so it surrounds bones, and also in joint capsules and heart valves. And it's function is to provide tensile strength in many directions. So you can easily pull on your skin and stretch it in many different ways, and it then returns back to its original form. Finally, we have the elastic connective tissue. And boy, does that look dense. So if you look really close to that, you can see that there are spaces where you will find the fibroblasts. The elastic connective tissue is primarily located in tissues that stretch an awful lot and need to return to the original state. This is examples include lung tissue, walls of arteries, the trachea, bronchial tubes, vocal cords, and some ligaments of the vertebrae. So the function is to allowing the stretching of these organs. So dense connective tissue. You've got dense regular connective tissue with collagen fibers all going in one direction, dense irregular connective tissue where the collagen fibers are going in many directions, and elastic connective tissue that's composed primarily of elastic fibers. Next is cartilage, where you have hyaline cartilage, fibrocartilage, and elastic cartilage. Now cartilage, it is worth to point out, is a dense work, uh, network of collagen fibers and elastic fibers that are embedded in chondroitin sulfate, which is a gel-like component of the ground substance. Cartilage is a vascular, so unlike the other uh, connective tissues, it does not have blood vessels within it. And so often it is surrounded by perichondrium, which is dense irregular connective tissue that would then contain the blood vessels and nerves. In this example, we see hyaline cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is found at the ends of bones and also in um, embryo, embryo uh, pre-bone structures. Um, you do not see a lot of fibers in it. However, there are indeed collagen fibers within the hyaline cartilage. You just cannot uh, see them. What you do see is these large, uh, what are called lacuna or 
spaces within the ground substance. And is it within these spaces or cavities that you find the chondrocytes or the functioning cells of the cartilage? So as I said, hyaline cartilage is found at the end of long bones. It can be found in the nose, the larynx, trachea, and in the fetal skeleton. And it provides a smooth surface for joint movement, flexibility, and support. Fibrocartilage has mostly collagen fibers in bundles that you can see pretty well. It also has the lacuna. It has the openings where the chondrocytes are located. However, fibrocartilage lacks a perichondrium. You can find fibrocartilage in the pubic symphysis between the connecting the uh, pelvic bones. You can see it in the intervertebral discs of the vertebral column and also cartilage pads of the knee, known as the menisci. And it functions in support and joining the structures together. And then there's the elastic cartilage. Here you see both the lacuni, the uh, cavities in which the chondrocytes are located, and you see a lot of branching fibers. So the elastic fiber is very dominant in elastic cartilage, not surprisingly. And elastic cartilage is found in the lid on top of the larynx, also known as the epiglottis, in parts of the external ear, and in the eustachian tubes. And it helps provide strength, elasticity, and maintain the shape of certain structures. So hyaline cartilage, you are not able to see any of the fibers, so it looks rather smooth, but they are there. Elastic cartilage, you can see the networked branched elastic fibers very well. And the fibrocartilage, where you can see the collagen fibers all bundled up. Then we come to bone tissue and the liquid connective tissue. Bone tissue has this uh, concentric ring structure. Some people like to refer to it as a tree that has been cut down, wh where you have the central canal where the blood vessels and nerves are located. And they are surrounded by rings of lamina, which is the extracellular matrix, which is very mineralized. And you also see these lacuna again. In this case, they are black in color, and within each lacuna is an osteocyte or bone cell. And then the central canal is connected to these uh, lacuni through the canaliculi, which are just canals that are allowing the diffusion of nutrients and wastes to and from the osteocytes. Obviously, they are found in various parts of bones throughout the body, and they function in support, protection, storage, they house blood-forming tissues and obviously serve as levers for movement. And then finally, our liquid connective tissue that we will look at, which is blood. Blood has blood plasma, which is a fluid, and within that fluid you find red blood cells, known as erythrocytes, platelets, known as thrombocytes, and white blood cells, known as leukocytes. They are located within blood vessels and within the chambers of the heart, and they function for instance, for things like transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide and in the immune response and in clotting so that you don't lose more blood than you need to when you're injured. I, that is it for the connective tissues.